and welcome to another episode of Rio's How-To Videos. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Simon Gorzath, and today we're going to look at how to make a roll cast. A roll cast is a fantastic cast to use when you've got obstructions behind you and you can't make a back cast and you still need to get your fly out there. With all our how-to videos, we start off with the best rigging, the best system and the best line to use. At, at Rio, we have what's called an in-touch single-handed spay line. And this is a line designed for roll casting and spay casting. This is the line I've got on my nine foot five weight rod. It's a really easy line to make roll cast with. And so let's put this all together, nip down here, show you how to make a roll cast, show you why to make a roll cast. Let's go down to the water. So here I am in the river, tree behind me, river in front. For obvious reasons, you can't do your regular back cast, right? There's a tree behind you. That's why you don't do your overhead cast. So it's in situations like this that the roll cast is invaluable. Really, there are three things to remember. The three things to remember with a roll cast, we're actually going to go backwards. We're going to look at the forward stroke first. And the forward stroke is something that uh, so many people get wrong. So a good forward stroke starts in what's called the key position. The key position is where your rod hand is about level with your shoulder and it's back about your shoulder. It's not starting in here in front of you. There's a little angle here in the wrist called the wedge. That's a great key position and the rod's angled at about one o'clock. So that's the, a great key position. A good forward stroke, the rod drives forward and the rod loads. And the rod loads because I'm driving but my rod angle isn't changing. That's called translation. So I drive, and at the end of the translation, my arm stops, and then this wrist closes. That is a great forward stroke. Translation to rotation. A bad forward stroke, so popular, so common, is people, as they go forward, the rod starts rotating. As they go forward, now they get to here, the rod's finished the forward stroke. What's left to do? So there's no line speed, there's no energy, the loops are wide, massive, and horrendous. Those are your two differences in your forward stroke. What's the difference, you might ask? Well, let's have a look. Let's look at a good forward stroke first, and I want you to watch the forward loop going out, long translation, rotation, and the line lifts off the air, lands out, goes out nice and straight, the line drops beautifully on the water, not a lot of effort. Now a bad forward stroke, again, watch the forward loop going out where there's all the early rotation, the line lands in a pile, the loop is wide, the fly line lands first. So get your forward stroke right. So first thing in a roll cast is get a good forward stroke. Develop this long translation, late rotation. Once that's dialed in, let's talk about something called the D-loop. Now the D-loop is this line hanging behind me. This is what makes my rod bend. That's my load. So when I've got a small D-loop like this here, I've got very little load. So the smaller this D-loop is, like here, it's almost non-existent. There's very little line bending the rod. I'm going to have to do the work, not the, not the rod. So these will be poor, inefficient casts. What would be more efficient is a D-loop that's bigger. The further back your D-loop is, the more efficient your roll cast will be. Of course, you've got to worry about trees. That's just part of it. But have a look at the difference again. I'm going to make some forward strokes out here. Here's a small D-loop, hardly reaching my shoulder. Not really a lot of line speed. Now I'm going to make a bigger D-loop. Line's a lot further behind me. See how much more efficient that forward stroke is. So D-loop is a huge part of your roll cast. Understand that the bigger that D-loop is, the better your roll cast is going to be. So get your D-loop right. That's the second thing. And the third thing is called the train track. And the train track is probably a very, I think it's a really important visual and an analogy. So I'm going to cast my line towards you, give you a better idea. A good roll cast, the forward stroke is close and parallel to this. This line lying on the water is called the anchor. If I make a forward stroke parallel and close to it, you can see how easily it unrolls. There's my line, and I'm aiming close and parallel, like two train tracks. That's why the, the train track, rail track analogy is fine. If I diverge those train tracks, in other words, if my line's here and I go over here, well, watch what happens on this car. So I'm going to aim over here. It doesn't work too much of an angle change. So the best roll cast you can make is where the roll cast is right down the edge of the train track. And the one thing you never, ever want to do is cross the track. So if my line is here and I cross it, let me just get my line out there so you can see better. If my line's out here, there's my train track facing that way. If I am straight at the camera, I'm gonna cross this track and you see what happens, you tangle. 
So never cross a train track. That can be dangerous. You can get a fly in your chin, your hook, you get a tangle. Try and avoid diverging your train track, wide angles. Make your best roll cast by following the train track. So in a summary, get your D-loop big as possible. Develop a good forward stroke, follow your train track. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thank you ever so much for tuning in to Rio's how-to series and stay tuned because we've got a whole bunch more of Rio's how-to episodes coming up. Thanks again for watching.